Gorilla Cinema back. Another dish. How we doing out there? Good, great, grand, and wonderful. Impromptu episode. I it had to be. Um, did did you guys? Did you happen? You remember when I did the gods? I think I actually deleted it now. <sighs> yep, I delete content. People are like, "Why would you delete fifty hours worth of content?" Because nobody. <sighs> Nobody wants to hear that stuff. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear me talk. Anyway, as you see on your dial, Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, if you heard, if you happen to be one of the lucky ones that heard me rant and rave on, uh, uh, what was it, the most recent Godzilla, uh, Godzilla, uh, King of the Monsters, is that the one? Uh, yeah, the most recent Godzilla. I You would think that I would like this stuff, and I I want to. I, I, I'm with you. I would think that I would like this stuff, too, and I just didn't. <laughs> like, I mean, some of the – I or, and what I mean by is that uh, didn't is all, like, the modern stuff and even – like, I mean, <clears throat> the older Godzillas, you know, are kind of funny, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, have a couple of – Dark Lagers, or a couple of blunts, whatever your intoxicant of choice is, or maybe you don't need that per se, and, you know, you could watch some of the old, old Godzillas and, you know, kind of giggle to it at its, you know, silliness of it all, um, but as far as the the modern ones, I just, I've disliked every single one, the Matthew Broderick one. And, you know, I saw that really young, and you would think that I'd be like, whoa, Godzilla. And I remember walking out of that going, Dad, that was dumb. That was dumb as fuck. I don't think I said that. I would have gotten hit. No, I didn't get hit. Uh, but I would have been grounded if I was just like, hey, that Godzilla movie you took me to was dumb as fuck. Yeah, I definitely would have been grounded. But um, I, I didn't like it even when I was a kid. And, you know, I've watched it older, and I'm just like, yeah, it's still shite. Um uh, even the the one with uh, uh, Walter White, uh, with him in it, I didn't didn't care for it. Um, I guess the Peter Jackson one, uh, King Kong, was okay, I suppose. Um, and Kong Skull Island would be a front runner as far as like the the modern the modern uh, monster giant monsters. Um, I mean, and I only like pieces of Skull Island. However, ladies and germs, um, Godzilla vs. Kong, I had a really good time. <laughs> I had a very, very fun time. And I mean, it's exactly what it, it's exactly what it's supposed to be, which is kind of what my issue was. Uh, you know, all the they dude. I think my favorite aspect of this film is the complete disregard for human life <laughs> I think that is my favorite like dude so many people quote unquote had to die quote unquote um, but in this in this movie uh, uh, amongst the collateral damage of the carnage <laughs> that's unleashed by these two so many I, that was my like I was just like this is like you awesome i just had and the, the movie it's the movie itself was fine um but i just had a really fun time uh you know i'm not gonna um did it is it as good as movie as minari no but it's not it's that's that's two completely different you know what i'm saying i f i had more fun in godzilla versus kong than i did minari <laughs> but it, it, but the point being is if you this is a good movie in the sense that it's a good Godzilla versus Kong movie. <laughs> it it is just mass destruction, on and there was you know little kind of well I mean, the story was they they just couldn't spend time is kind of what I thought is like oh all right we'll forgive it what are we talking about the Hollow Earth sure whatever <laughs> yeah Hollow Earth that's what we'll call it fine whatever um but uh, it was. A couple things. So I'm not going to talk too much about. Do I? Re I'm not going to talk too much about the movie, but just kind of stuff. Well, one, I I didn't prepare. 
I didn't prepare. Well, Adam Wingard, you guys know him. He did one that, well, he did quite a few that I like, like You're Next. And uh, I did a segment in VHS. At, uh, anyway, um, who wrote the story? Terry Rosio, Michael Daughtry, Daughtry, Daughter, Daughtery, Daughter T. Why? Like, I said that perfectly fine before I wrote mine because I definitely made sure I was like, Daughtry, Daughtery. There you go. Um, that's who it was written by, uh, starring Alexander Skarsgård, True Blood alumni. I'm sure if he's listening to this, why would I have done more than that, sir? I know you have, but you'll you'll always be Eric to me. Uh, Millie Bobby Brown, Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, who I, I was actually I was very happy with Brian Tyree Henry's contribution uh, to the film. It I thought in a character that. I, I guess I would. I don't even know what to expect. I just thought his the his portrayal as his character as this kind of conspiracy theorist podcaster. Um, I thought he was really good. I was just like, yeah, man, this dude's fuck. People forget. Like people think he's fucking the rapper in Atlanta. And while that's true, and he is really good in that role, like he got to start, I think, on Broadway for Book of Mormon. Like, don't quote me on that, but. That could be anyway. Just a uh, really fun character, really like. And in, in a story where the characters are already on the billboard, we don't. Uh, you, you didn't need to kind of make me laugh, but have it, uh, but there be a point to it, um, because his conspiracies. Spoiler alert: may not be conspiracies at all about God's, Godzilla and King Kong. Uh, Rebecca Hall, blah, 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 Brian Tyree Henry, Shun Aguri, uh, Isa Gonzalez, uh, Julian Dennison, Lance Reddick, Kyle Chandler's in it briefly. I just, it, there was once upon a time when Kyle Chandler's face kind of annoyed me. I was just like, oh, just another good looking middle aged man. And now I am always happy to see Kyle Chandler. In a film, I'm trash. But it just goes to show that people people change. People can change uh, for the better. And I, I'm not a hater. I'm a lover of Kyle Chandler. Uh, the music uh, in Godzilla vs. Kong, oh, so good. Uh, Tom Holkenberg, Holkenborg, which is Junkie XL for some. Oh, it's so good. Like the Hong Kong track on the uh, soundtrack. Dude, I know I'm a nerd. He's talking about a soundtrack right now. Yeah. Yeah, motherfucker, I am. You want me to be like, oh, dude, there was this part where Kong smashed this building? No. You know that's what's going to happen. <laughs> um, anyway, Junkie XL's score was fucking amazing, and his track Hong Kong, which takes place in Hong Kong, oh, it's like 13 minutes. It is fucking epic. <laughs> it is. It has everything. Like, you're going to hook, like me, the 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 selfish me, the, the one off air, I... Realize for for good or ill, I am a sucker for some fucking war drums, bro. <laughs> Did he just say bro? Whatever. Bro, sis, I am a sucker for war drums. I can't help myself. <laughs> but that Hong Kong track, whoo, it has everything. The the hook was the war drums, but it there's like three movies in that one bit of score from Hulkenborg and it was fucking I people need to listen to more soundtracks man that's that's what I'm saying oh well, I'll listen to music so do I with lyrics and everything <laughs> I just I also have a pre it's it's no different than and I've actually had an argument with people before they're just like I disagree <clears throat> I would put Hans Zimmer up there with Beethoven what? <laughs> I know. Crazy, right? I don't think so. I I really I don't see how a film score is any different. In fact, and this is just me just trying to have a little fun on air. I don't know if I believe this. I'm just throwing it out there. This is what happens when you don't have any show prep. I would say maybe it is sometimes harder as a composer, film composer, than like a traditional, can traditional, traditional composer, 
It is harder to be a film composer. One of two things. You're, I don't know that you necessarily have the freedom, which does make it harder to create, if you are bound by these images that you're seeing. But nonetheless, are creating, and I know that you know you get a ton of people that have to say yes to what you're doing, but like, I think that that's kind of harder constraints to work under as opposed to the traditional composers, just like, oh, it's in my head, you know, and then we're going to do this here and we're going to do that here. And, oh, I apologize for, if you guys heard that, some asshole that still thinks awesome big exhaust ugh, and it continues I fucking I I know I'm getting old I am but I have never been fucking car guy never not not even when I was fucking 13 14 never have been car guy yeah you can fucking keep it think it's so stupid they always did always just never understood it oh that that car can go fucking 100 30 miles an hour cool where <laughs> I don't I don't know I'm sorry if you didn't hear it then I'm just babbling like a crazy person but uh what was I saying something about composers composition <laughs> Compo- um just because like a traditional composer doesn't this can kind of it's it's much more freedom I think and it's not to say that film composers don't get to do that I don't know I just I'm not saying one's better than the other I'm just saying that it I don't know why we kind of poo-poo um, film composers and we don't put them in the same league as a Bach or Beethoven. Like, I, I don't know. Or maybe they do. Maybe they do, and I just don't run in those circles. We are still talking about Godzilla vs. Kong. And we got to, down this tangent because I thought that Hulkenborg, Tom Hulk, Junkie XL's score was fantastic. Fantastic. Um... What else did I want to talk about that wasn't in the movie? I heard that's not that has nothing to do with the movie itself. Um, which actually had, the, I, you know, what I I will say this about the movie: um, I wasn't annoyed by the human characters like I have been, especially in Godzilla: King of the Monsters. I just I don't know why, and I and I like the people that were portraying said character. Oh, oh. I just I was like these what the what the fuck. I like I am so annoyed right now and I am like seven blunts deep that's not true but it I was so annoyed by um the portrayals so in this in Godzilla vs. Kong the the human characters really really good and and only need and we only use them when we actually need it sure there's a couple of throw throwaway lines here and there but I'm all right with it if it's few and far between and this is the fucking thing that we're watching. We're watching Godzilla vs. Kong. We're going to have one of the, like, a fucking catchphrase or whatever. It's not a catchphrase. There's no catchphrase in this. But, like, we're going to have a one-liner here and there. I know that going into it. That's Hollywood, baby. And I sometimes, and sometimes it happens too much where we throw out the one-liners too much. And then the flip side is sometimes we try to make the characters too smart for the shit that we're watching. And it's like, well, sure, that works for, like, Inception. You know, like a smart action thriller or something. So I, I'm believing these guys. But not always. You know, sometimes then I'm just like, whoa. And I think a couple characters fell victim to that in God, in Godzilla, uh, King of the Monsters. And, and, you know, there's people that on the producer side of things or even the actors and actresses themselves would be like, well, what do you want from us? You, it's either too serious or it's not serious enough. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and I, I don't know. I'm trash. What do you want from me? I, I make I make no no uh, I, you'll get no argument from me. I am a huge piece of trash. I'm trash, like that spoon, or is it a spork, or is it a fork? In Toy Story Four, I don't know. I watched it when I was way too old. But the point is, <laughs> um, we didn't we we the the characters. 